Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to Python tutorial 2. We have presented uh, uh, how to represent a wave function, how to discretize a wave function or how to represent a wave function on a grid, uh, position grid. And uh, next what we will do, we will take that discretized wave function and we will normalize it and we will check how to normalize it. Um, the wave function which we have taken, this is the form of the wave function we have taken. Clearly it is not a normalized wave function. I can prove that and uh, uh, in order to prove that what I need to do is that I have to take this integration minus infinity to plus infinity. Remember it is an analytical way of uh, doing normalization and numerical way of doing normalization we will find out very soon. So we have to take the square of absolute value of this wave function and then take the integration of it. This integration is going to be then minus infinity to, to plus infinity a to the power minus 2 x square dx. This is nothing but square root of pi by 2. This is the standard Gaussian integral which we have been using in this course in many occasions. So normalized, if it is a normalized wave function then this integration should have given me 1 but because it is not giving me 1 it is not normalized. So I have to make it normalized and for the normalization what I do, uh, what we will do is we have to find out the norm. Norm is defined by uh, the square root of this entire uh, integration the square root of this integration and once we get the norm then we divide the wave function non normalized wave function which is not normalized yet that wave function has to be divided by its own norm to get the normalized wave function and then if I do minus infinity to plus infinity integration psi normalized this should give me 1. So that is the procedure for doing uh, normalization. So let us uh, look at this for this wave function we can easily find out the norm. Norm is going to be um, square root of uh, this. So I have this pi by 2 already. So norm is going to be pi by 2 to the power 1 by 4. So analytical form of normalized Gaussian function. So this is the Gaussian function. So normalized Gaussian function would be given by, uh, we have to divide it, uh, so divide by the norm. So it is e to the power minus x square this is the function and I am dividing by by norm which is pi by 2 to the power 1 by 4. So this is nothing but 2 by pi to the power 1 by 4 e to the power minus x square. That is the normalized Gaussian uh, wave function. And what is our task here in this module, uh, in, this, in this tutorial is that we normalize the discretized wave function. This wave function has been discretized already. We have seen how to discretize this wave function. We will uh, use that discretized wave function and we will numerically normalize it. So there are 
uh, and then in order to do this normalization clearly we have to do this numerical integration because this integration has to be now performed numerically. This integration will give me the norm and once I get the norm I can take square root of that norm and divide uh, this wave function by the square root of norm I get the normalized wave function. So ultimately we have to depend on numerical integration of this um, absolute uh, square of absolute value of the wave function. Now there are many ways one can perform numerical integration. Numerical methodology can construct a, a, a full fledged course and we we are not in this course we are not actually going over numerical methodologies. We are always using making use of scipy the all the functionalities which is implemented in scipy because scipy has been uh, developed keeping scientific community in mind and there are many uh, protocols which is already packaged in scipy uh, which can be very useful for the numerical uh, analysis or numerical solutions. So uh, we will make use of a highly optimized integration package of scipy it is called scipy integrate this, this package provides many uh, options to do uh, numerical integration. So it, it, it has a pre-written pre code in it and we are going to use that code directly to do the to perform this numerical integration. The scipy integrate submodule of scipy provides a number of integration techniques including Simpson's rule. Now what is the Simpson's rule we will not go over uh, in details in this course. It is a technique a numerical technique which can enable uh, one to get a numerical integration done. So we will use this Simpson's rule. Uh, there are many other techniques which can be used which are already um, included in this uh, scipy integrate package but we are just selecting Simpson's rule. Uh, and the construct which we, uh, which we have to use in order to uh, implement this Simpson's rule for the integration numerical integration is called is, is following it is Sims y x functionality where y would be an array and x would be also an array both would be an array and we have already got those arrays we in, in instead of y we have now x that is um, uh, instead of uh, y we have now uh, this psi x square of the absolute square this is going to be my y array this is going to be my y array and x array is already the x grid we have prepared. So already we have both arrays uh, in hand and we have to use that uh, under this construct sims y x just remind um, we remind ourselves that uh, when you have used plot functionality of pi plot we have used x y plot x y construct and here when you are doing in numerical integration uh, uh, imported from uh, the module import imported from scipy integrate I have sims y x so y comes first and then x so this is the uh, this is something which may confuse suddenly um, somebody uh, if you are doing this python programming for the first time uh, just rem remember that we have already used plot functionality or pi plot that has a construct x y but here I have a construct y x so do not get confused or do not shuffle these two um, arrays um, or, or, or do not write like sims Sims x y don't don't like it uh, don't don't write it like this way. So this is just a uh, uh, something which may we may uh, do something wrong in the in the coding if we if we write it. 
So, this seems x or the seems y x functionality of psi pi integrate sub module integrates the y array numerically while x array provides the points at which y has to be sampled to compute the, uh, the, the Simpson's rule of the numerical integration. So, we will use this it is a very simple thing and it is a pre pre-written code it has. So, once you invoke this Sims um, uh, functionality it is actually using that uh, pre-written code in Python uh, sci pi integrate sub module and it will give me the result. So, what we will do here in our present problem square of absolute value of y function this is the y array as I have told uh, before that this is going to be my y array uh, is a square of absolute value of uh, the wave function this wave function. This is nothing but the probability density this is the probability density function we are familiar with it is called probability density function which is square of absolute value of the wave function and this y array has to be integrated. The probability density function is sampled at the points present in the x array and x array we know that it is we have defined as as minus 100 to plus 100. Uh, so, it's, it, it, it is the x grid. And because we are taking x grid to be minus 100 to plus 100 remember in this integration we have limit minus infinity to plus infinity and we will not be able to use this limit clearly what we will use the moment we, we use this sims functionality of this psi pi integrate sub module it will adopt the limit of the x grid which is minus 100 to plus 100. So, now this is my practical numerical calculation which is going to be uh, performed with the help of Simpson's rule. Now, Python's built in functionality this ABS absolute value ABS will give me returns absolute value of a given number and that exactly what we need because this is absolute square of absolute value of the wave function and uh, I can get this uh, absolute value of a wave function by this ABS which means that I have to write ABS within bracket psi x then I get the absolute value. So, what does it mean by absolute value if the number is a complex number let us say a plus i b if it is a complex number then ABS will return its magnitude which is a square square root of a square plus b square I will get this value. And if the number is a real number if it is a real number for a real number ABS functionality this functionality is actually present in Python's built in function uh, library it does not need to be imported from other module. So, this if it is a real number then it will remove the negative sign of the number it will remove the negative sign of the number and that is the way it will return. So, what we need to do is that we have to use this absolute value of x uh, psi x and then we have to, um, to do the integration make it square and then do the integration. So, uh, we will now numerically implement this idea uh, clearly minus infinity to plus infinity is not the limit for us it is going to be minus 100 to plus 100 limit the limit has been will be automatically selected in the uh, seems uh, if I use 
Sims functionality this is y then x then x grid limit would be selected as the limit for the integration. So, uh, we will we will see that uh, the first two lines are importing the libraries then we have to definitely create the x grid. Once we have created the x grid we have to discretize the wave function we have already seen how to do that. Then these are the new steps for the normalization what and this is very simple three steps normalization steps. First we will define the probability density of psi. How we are going to define? It is nothing but absolute value of psi square. So, it is, it is so this, this part is nothing but psi x square that is the probability density. And then we have to find out the norm, norm is going to be square root of this integration of this probability density versus x. So, so we have we have different this is this is my y array, this is my x array. So, I have to first integrate it and after the integration I have to take the value square root of that value and then we are going to print the norm. We will just double check what is the norm we are getting. So, we will move to uh, laptop and we have these libraries importing the libraries we are going to keep it as it is but the plotting part we do not need because we are not going to plot it anymore. Instead of plot we have to import uh, the, the sims functionality from scipy integrate sub module. So, I will write down from scipy dot integrate import sims so that I can use that later. So, this, this part remaining to be the same because we are creating the x grid first then we are discretizing the wave function um, then this plot part we do not need anymore. We have to now after discretizing the wave function we have to now calculate the norm and how do I calculate it? First I have to get the probability density of psi. So, probability density probe density just giving a name with underscores so that anybody can um, uh, understand it when it is reading uh, it later stage. So, using a good um, name of a particular function can help understand what is the meaning of that function. So, that is the reason I am explicitly writing like this way otherwise one can use also y to represent the, uh, the probability density function. So, probability density function what is what does it mean? It is the absolute value first I have to take the absolute value of psi. So, this is going to give me the absolute value of psi which is another array basically it will take absolute value of each point each each uh, element of uh, psi and then this needs to be um, I have to take the square of that value each value. So, I am so probability density gives me another array where each element uh, that where we have taken absolute value of each element in the array and then we have squared it. So, norm would be defined by square root, but we have not uh, imported square root. Square root is not a mathematical this mathematical function square root mathematical function is not available with Py, uh, Python's built in uh, library. It has to be imported from scipy. So, you will be using sqrt. Remember many of these functionality can be imported from um, numpy as well, but we are deliberately not using numpy at all. We do not want to mix up the libraries. We want to just keep things simple that is why we are using always this scipy um, uh, module because 
it is more optimized and will keep using the same module for different purpose. So, norm I have to define by square root of the integration of this um, of this function. So, I will use sims then I have to use y comma x, x is already defined and then I have to use print to check what is the norm I get. Okay. So, we we have we have to uh, check uh, when you are using many brackets we have to always think we have to double check whether the brackets are in proper order or not. We have two brackets here. So, we have two brackets here also and um, that exactly what we need uh, should always uh, double check. So, if we if we run the program right now uh, then we get back the norm. Norm is 1.119. We go back to the slides we get this value for the norm. This is nothing but the value which we have used before. We analytically solved the problem and we have found that uh, the norm has to be pi by 2 to the power 1 by 4. So, this is the value which we get here numerically. We will move on and we will uh, once we have understood that we have been able to get the norm uh, remaining part is very simple we have to just divide the wave function by the norm and we get the uh, uh, normalized wave function. So, this part for the normalization um, is quite understandable up to this far we have understood how to get the norm and then we have to name another we, we are giving a name PSI norm which is normalized wave function which is nothing but the earlier wave function PSI this is the earlier wave function which was not normalized I am now dividing by the norm and I am getting I should get the normalized wave function. So, what we have done is that to make sure that we have normalized it we can always double check by taking this integration one more time psi if it is a normalized wave function then this is going to be 1. So, we are doing one more time we are taking this as a wave function normalized wave function and checking whether we are getting norm to be 1 or not. So, these three steps has been um, written to recheck whether we have got the normalized wave function. So, for that we have to again take the probability density then the integration and then square root of that integration is going to be norm and I am going to print norm. So, we will move to laptop and we will just uh, we do not need to print the norm anymore we will just keep the norm and then uh, we will just normalize the wave function we can normalize the wave function by writing PSI norm this is a new name we are giving which is nothing but PSI divided by norm. So, I have this normalized wave function remember PSI norm still an array it has uh, 2001 number of points um, and this, this is representing an array. So, PSI divided by norm it means that each element of PSI has been, div uh, has been divided by uh, the norm value. Once we get that then we will recheck whether we have really normalized the wave function. For that we will define the probability density of this normalized wave function we are giving the pattern of naming we are keeping similar probability density PSI norm. So, this is going to be absolute value of this normalized wave function 
what it does it will take the absolute value for each element of this array and then square it. So, this is again another array we have prepared and then I will write norm 1 this is going to be then square root of here PSI norm. So, y array is going to be PSI um, the probability density of PSI norm and then if I want to print I will write down. So, I execute the program what I get back is 0 0.999 which is equivalent to 1. So, I will go back to the slides. So, I have this value which is equivalent to 1. So, this kind of floating point value will make it depending on because it is a numerical integration we may not get 1, but 0 0.999 is equivalent to 1. So, because it is 1 the norm is getting 1 it means that the wave function which I have right now here the PSI norm this PSI norm is now a normalized wave function that we have proved and always in quantum dynamics um, we have to always use a normalized wave function. This is something which we have uh, learned uh, in this uh, in this uh, in this course. We will move on and we will look at uh, the expectation value of position. Now, expectation value of position what does it mean I will just remind if I have a probability density distribution which is psi x absolute square if I have this then question is what is the mean of this or average of this distribution. So, clearly for a Gaussian probability density distribution the mean would be here this is called the mean value and what does it mean experimentally it means that is the average of many repeated experiments that is the average value. So, expectation value has a direct connection to the experimental outcome because in the experiment we repeat the experiment many many times and after repeating it if we take the average of the outcome we get the value that value should correspond the x correspond to this expectation value which can also be calculated from the known wave function of the system. So, that is the basic idea. Expectation value of position of uh, is given by um, this in general it is given by if x is an operator then expectation value is going to be minus infinity to plus infinity then psi star x then x operator then psi x dx that is the expectation value which can also be written because x is an op, uh, uh, position operator is nothing but a multiplication operator one can keep it anywhere in the integrand its position does not mean anything because it is multiplication. Multiplication does not follow any order it can be multiplied by this way it can be multiplied by this way both side is perfectly fine. So, but operators in general operators does not work that way if we consider the derivative operator if I have y z then this derivative operator is acting only on z it is not acting on y. Um, so, operator in general has a particular direction but position operator because it is a multiplication operator it does not have any direction. So, one can position it anywhere. So, I have position it here so that I can club this psi star psi together and psi star psi is nothing but the absolute value. So, in the end expectation value if we want to calculate all we need to do is that we have to construct another function. What is that function? The first function is the probability function which is psi x absolute value um, uh, square of absolute value of psi x this is one function it has to be multiplied by x the x is another function. So, these two functions needs to be multiplied. Now, um, if we think about this 
probability density distribution looks like this and x has um, uh, x function this function has certain way let us say this is the way x is working and if we multiply two functions let us say these two functions are multiplying in terms of matrix or in terms of uh, this discretized um, on a grid it is nothing but multiplying each element if it is a simple multiplication scalar multiplication then it is multiplying each element to get the final form of the total function. So, if I multiply so this element has to be multiplied by this element and each element will be defined by its own grid point. So, for corresponding to each grid point I have two elements for coming from two uh, functions and they then needs to be multiplied. So, each element has to be multiplied. So, it is a element wise multiplication because it is a scalar multiplication. and scalar multiplication. So, it is very easy to do and uh, uh, so in the end this is an array which will be represented by like this way psi x naught square then x naught then psi x 1 then x 1 psi x 2 x 2 like this way we continue and x x naught is the grid point. So, initial grid point was x naught final grid point was x n minus 1. So, these are the points we get in the probability density distribution. So, this is this is the uh, array we create uh, by this multiplication and this is the array which we will be using for the integration. Uh, uh, Simpson uh, following the Simpson's method um, as an y array. So, but the question is in Python programming the scalar product of two arrays is given by element wise multiplication and element wise multiplication can be done by just multiplication operator which is available in Python's built in library. So, if I have y array and x array if I multiply then what will happen it will do, do element wise multiplication each element will be multiplied by the corresponding other element. So, y 1 will be multiplied by x 1 y 0 will be multiplied by x 0 then y 2 will be multiplied by x 2 and so on and then it will give me another array. So, it is very simple. So, we will move forward and we will see how to get this integration done so that I can get the expectation value. This is the integration and again um, uh, practically we cannot do this minus infinity to plus infinity integration. This is going to be done with the help of Simpson um, rule and uh, for that it will just pick up the integration limit as the x grid limit. So, this is going to be our integration this entire part is going to be y. So, in a Simpson rule I have to specify y and y is going to be this part and x is the x grid over the x grid it will be sampling the y values and then integrate it. Um, this x grid creation part is known to us now discretization of the wave function is known to us then calculating the norm we have to first normalize the wave function because this expectation value this when you write down minus infinity to plus infinity psi star x psi dx is the expectation value we assume that psi is normalized. So, we have to first normalize the wave function to get the right expectation value. So, we normalized it this part is also known and then little bit tricky we have made here. First we have to get the probability density of the normalized wave function that is known to us now. 
then the integrand part we will just write down this is the integrand part. So, what we have done here this probability density will be multiplied by x we get the integrand and then expectation value is going to give me the integration part where y is this entire integrand and then we will print the expected value expectation value for this. So, this part is little new others are uh, known to us. So, we will move to the uh, uh, laptop and we will write down the program. We have uh, everything remaining to be the same then um, except for this, this is x grid we have prepared then discretize the wave function then we have to normalize the wave function this far we are done and then we have to find out the uh, expectation value of the position. So, this part will be deleted and we will write down finding expectation value of position where first we have to write down this probability density PSI norm which we need to do because uh, after we normalize it uh, we have to find out the probability density and then this probability density has to be multiplied by x so that I can create another uh, we multiply by x and then expectation value is expectation v expect v which is represented uh, representing the expectation value expectation value we get from this integration and in this integration y has to be this integrand and then we are going to print the expectation value. So, if we execute the program we get minus we go back to the slide we get minus 6 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 18 which is almost equal to 0 it is the 0 position and that should be because uh, e to the power our wave function was e to the power minus x square this is a Gaussian function which is centered at x equals 0. A Gaussian function which is centered at x equals 0 is having this form, but if I want to change the Gaussian function to be centered at different place then I have to write x minus a whole square. If I do that then Gaussian will be centered at position a and that will prove here. We will move to laptop. I will just change this uh, the definition of this Gaussian function according to this definition which I have used right now this is centered at x equals 0 now I will center it at x equals let us say 3 x minus 3 that is why I am writing and once we do that then we will see that we will check what is the expectation value we have expectation value we get 3.000 which is close to 3 numerically we get some error always and um, uh, we have to deal with this kind of error um, but this is 3 we are getting. So, basically what we are seeing is that center of the Gaussian is representing the expectation value of the uh, position and uh, that is now 3 if I change 3 to uh, 10. I will see that expectation value I will get 10 
instead of 10 I get 9.999 which is equivalent to 10 numerically. So, what we see here is that um, the for a Gaussian function the center of the Gaussian is actually represented by the expectation value of position that we have seen before also and one can do analytically one can one can perform analytical um, integration for this uh, with the help of this kind of function to check whether really expectation value would be at this uh, value this the, the, the at this parameter which we are using. So, we have come to um, end of this um, um, of this uh, uh, course uh, of the, oh, sorry uh, in, end of this module uh, this uh, python tutorial 2 where we have uh, learned uh, how to represent the wave function in the computer programming with the help of python and then how to normalize the wave function that is a very important step because in every quantum dynamics uh, problem we will be normalizing it and um, first we have to normalize it and then we have to move forward and then we have uh, learned how to get the expectation value. Um, we will stop here and uh, we will continue uh, learning time dependent quantum chemistry in this course in the next module and next tutorials.